And time for the Sheriff Sit Down, brought to you and sponsored by our community credit union. Jail Chief Kevin Hanson is on the air, as long as long with, uh, along with Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury. Morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Got a lot of things to talk about, but first things first, uh, uh, Chief Hanson, a uh, question for you. We had a story last hour about a guy is getting busted sending supposed legal documents to inmates, but the documents were dipped or they had synthetic no, no, they were, marijuana they on them. They were sent it. Yeah. to them like yeah. this. So the question was... So the inmates could eat it. Yeah, so they the eat paper, it afterwards. I guess. Is this something that, that happens? I know we always talk about criminals thinking they're smarter than they need to be. And how would someone be able to get a letter through that? Don't you guys have security protocols like that? And yeah. this was not our jail. You're no, 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 no. I want no, to no. make that clear. It's not the Mason County Jail. This is like in Florida or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, in Florida. We, you know, the inmates, inmates are still afforded uh, attorney-client privilege, and um, so we can't, we can't just read their legal materials. Uh, but it's a pretty common trick from uh, people to uh, label things as legal material when they're really not legal material. Uh -huh. Um, so we, we do open those letters and we open them in front of the inmates and we peruse them and make sure that there's, you know, paper soaked. I mean, you can see them paper soaked with something. And oh, you can tell that. Yeah. Okay. And if that's the case, we'll turn it around and reject it. For sure. So Interesting. I, that came yeah, what they the say, office. they, they uh, confiscated, what, 30 some. Uh, yeah, it was all over the place. Send pieces of paper yeah. soaked in this. Yeah. And the synthetic marijuana we talked about, it's killing people. And that, yeah, and it's you know, is so, something else. It's a big deal. Uh, <laughs> it could be brought up on murder charges, something yeah, happened like that. Let's all right, we had it. a great weekend and a great week last week. Let's uh, reflect back uh, to the law enforcement torch run, which was on Thursday of last <sighs> week. Great. What a powerful time. Started up in the north end, uh, 8 o'clock on Thursday at the Belfair Safeway there. and. Walk us through until we joined up with uh, the sheriff's office at the uh, high school. Well, I I'll tell you, there was a couple things that came out of that, and you talk about a great week. I, I first want to recognize both North Mason High School and Shelton High School, uh, the students there. And each of those schools, that when we made a pass through with the torch, uh, the students from, from those school districts uh, came out in support of our Special Olympics athletes. And um, we had a big tough guy with us from uh, DOC that ran with us. And at the end, he told me, he said, that was one of those moving things I've ever seen. Aww. To see the respect of the, the, of, of the, the students um, supporting their fellow students in a Special Olympics. And he said, that was one of the neatest things I've ever seen. He says, I'm in for next year. Wow. So I, I thought that was tremendous. I, I want to thank all those businesses that came out and, and, and bought T-shirts, contributed, um, helped us out with that. Um, I know Jeff, you were, were one of our runners on. And that. you still have T-shirts. I still have some T-shirts. We're still going to try to sell those up until the end of the United States Special Olympic Games. Um, the the other one I just throw out there for the United States Army, I, a young man uh, said that he would come out in one of those long stretches. We didn't know until the night before. We had one section we know had somebody cover it, and he said, "Hey, I'll I'll run that." And uh, came down and started off with us at the first run. He says, "Could I run down to the office on the first run?" He ran every single stage. Every one of them, wow. the whole day, every single stage. Oh, I don't know what wow. our total mileage was on that, but you know, thank you to, uh, uh, I, if I have the title right, um, uh, 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 Sergeant uh, Mike Johnson from the United States Army oh, uh, Special yeah, Operations cool. Air Regiment to come out and run with us like that. And he says next year he's going to bring some more of their group down. But uh, what a neat thing that was. And um, and also I want to thank the public. I know there's a few places where we get out there and we do slow down traffic sure. a little bit and having a little bit of patience, but when they realized what was going on, how many people were honking and waving and thanking us for doing that, and WSP spent some of their motor units out so we could move that traffic along, we didn't get any hold up, so um, Very thank cool. you all so much. It yeah. was just a great, great day for our athletes. It was, it was pretty powerful to be a part of and seeing the seeing the kids at the high school was something. Oh, else. isn't that something? Yeah, something yeah Caleb else. said it, like everyone came out. Yeah, everyone Both came North out. Mason cool. and Shelton yeah. High School, what, a, what an incredibly respectful group, and, and again, thank you so much for that. Kevin White, uh, we talked to you already, but you're back in. What what else is going on? What do you have you here for? Well, well uh, last week, week before last, I had the opportunity to talk to the Board of County Commissioners again about jail capacity. Okay, good. And uh, I had done um, quite a bit of research, actually, of what exactly the jail capacity is and, and why there's different 
capacities. And um, I went back through the history books in, at the Mason County Jail, and I've got a stack of them that's probably 12 inches deep. <laughs> and uh, there's there's independent studies on that jail from back in 1986 when they first moved into it that showed that it was overcrowded. And then in 96, there was another one. And then in 2006, there was another independent study from a third party outside the county. And, and all these studies said the jail is over, overcrowded and uh, understaffed and underfunded. And, um, and here we are today with that same jail same and thing. the same predicament. <laughs> so, um, but there's been a lot of talk about, you know, what, how many people can that jail actually hold? Sure. And, you know, there's been numbers out there, 144, there's been 102, there's been 93, there's been 112, you know, and, and it's all in writing in all these studies and, and these things that I've seen over the years. And I'm like, okay, I need to put some sense, I need to make some sense out of this and try to try to draw some finality to that to the jail population yeah. problem or the cap the number well, yeah those are all different numbers i mean yeah th that's yeah. from 144 to 93 right is a the size massive. of the man or woman that's that's in there right? so <laughs> so so uh so i did um i i, I um researched the national, national institute of corrections and they have a they have a pretty neat deal there where where there's they have different designations for capacity and uh, the first one is design capacity and uh, that jail was originally designed to hold 45 people in 1985 and in the 1990s they added three beds so they had original design capacity of 48 48 so that means that jail was designed to serve uh, 48 meals every meal period mm -hmm. it was designed to allow 48 you know people to to go to the medical area it was designed to uh, you know accommodate 48 people for recreation for washroom, washroom for laundry okay, for yeah. showers for you know the things that we have to constitutionally provide sure right in the in the late uh, in 2015 or 2016 actually um, there's been renovations throughout the years but we added 20 more beds and uh, and the female beds so the rated capacity as of today is 68. Wow. So the jail's average daily population is running about 90. And um, in addition to that, we're running about 13 on our MA offender labor program. So you take 90 plus 100 plus 13 is about 103. Okay. So then you have the next category, which is rated capacity. And that's the total number of physical beds available for housing inmates. Temporary mattresses on the floor do not count as part of that maximum sustainable capacity. So uh, that's where we count the total number of beds. The total number of beds is 93. Okay. So okay. that is a number. That's so the number. 73 male population beds and 20 female. So there's 93 physical beds in the jail. I've invited people to come in and actually physically count those, and you came in. Yeah. So thank you for yeah. that. So there's 93. So let me ask you this question. So in 85, when we were looking at the mid-40s, upper-40s number, was that assumed that it was one inmate per cell? Correct. And now we're kind of two, pe two people yes. per cell. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they double bunked it over the years. So the, so the next category is what they call operational capacity. And that's the number of inmates a facility can effect effectively and efficiently manage and classify. Operational capacity is usually about 80% of the rated capacity. Now, this is this is right from the National Institute of Corrections okay. guidelines. So the rated but general uh, population capacity is 93. You take uh, uh, we went 75% of the rated capacity um, due to the lack of office space, nursing, storage, and kitchen space. And so we have a general rated capacity of the jail of 70. Huh. Do you ever have that many people in there? Oh, yes. Yeah, we have, 90, we have uh -huh. 90, 90 in there every day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then the, the um, bad people then, out there. <laughs> then the next capacity is a functional capacity. And that's the number of inmates a facility can accommodate and still maintain basic services. Okay. So beyond this capacity, basic services and security begin to break down, and usually expressed as a, that's usually expressed as a percentage of the rated capacity as determined by the sheriff. So the rated capacity is 93. We already talked about that. Yeah. That's how many beds are in there. The 86% uh, of the rated capacity um, is 80. So that's taken into consideration. You know the the crime the classification of the inmates the crimes that they've committed the the amount of staff we have um uh so it's 80 and that's what our cap yeah. is at is 80. so then the last one is obviously emergency capacity and that's what basically when every single bed is full with an inmate yeah and that's 93 and above so 
Um, and that's it, really. So I just this one. go ahead, sure. I've been preaching on this for 12 years, and I, and I really appreciate Chief Hansen coming in and doing that final research. We continue to hear 144 beds by people in the county. Where do they keep coming up with that? I know where they came up, but I'll let you so, come up with that. So, so 144 beds, uh, Sheriff Weibark back in, I don't know when he was, before my time, sure. obviously, uh, and before Sheriff's time, 2004-ish, uh, the jail was running full. And um, the, the sheriff said, hey, you know what, we got to put some restrictions on who comes into jail. And uh, he pulled out 100. They were running the high 80s, you know, uh, low 90s as far as having the amount of people in there. And the sheriff just said, guess what, we're capping the jail at 100, period. So then what happened is in uh, 2000, uh, 2000s, mid-2000s, the county uh, took one of the recreation yards and they, they remodeled it and created a special minimum security housing area. And guess how many beds they added? <laughs> 44. 44. <laughs> so, so therefore, you have this arbitrary number that the sheriff put a cap on, which he, which rightfully so he did, and then you add 44 beds to it, and now all of a sudden you have 144 beds. Uh, when I took that tour, those beds aren't there now, are they? No. No, no they've been renovated no, so that, again. Those no. that yeah. And that's the important gone. thing, because we've got some people out there preaching the wrong number, and they just don't know, and they don't come in there and count. And that's the whole thing why we were offering up on Tuesdays to come in. I, and I kept and telling people. And they think people, they know it. Is it still uh, yeah. open? I, I mean, can we still go? Oh, yeah. Yes. Tomorrow, 10 yeah. o'clock. Right? I know most Let's people can them. at least count to 100. And if we go through there, I'll, I'll count them with you. But we kept <laughs> having people out there saying this number that they heard. And they were completely wrong and making it uh, way overblown. Um, this has been an issue. I have the article on it from 1985-86 when it was in the, in the newspaper and it talked about the jail being over the amount of people it, it should hold. And, 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 and it's like everybody acts like nobody knew about this. It's been 30 wow. some years. Um, <laughs> the other piece that I think is very interesting in one of those studies, and Kevin will correct me on my number if I'm wrong, but in one of the most recent ones that we had done, um, a company came in, and, and I might be a couple off of my number, but said that the jail should, by, by 2015, because of our population of our county, we should have a jail that ho should hold at least 212, I think it was. Wow. Th that would be the minimum that we should be holding, that we would need to effectively um, hold for Mason County. Hmm. And we're at 90, you know, 94. Wow. So one, one, there is one, some good news about that. Okay. We, have a, we have the criminal justice working team, which is a group of uh, county leaders that's established by statute. Uh, we meet once a month, and um, as, a, as a result of those meetings, we've uh, once again established a subcommittee to work on j a jail project. Oh. And uh, so that subcommittee actually met with a, uh, a jail consultant uh, last week. A company um, that's a consultant who did the Skagit County Jail and uh, many, many, many other jails across the country, and uh, so we're working on we're working on that. And um, uh, you know that the whole the whole lack of jail space is is um, is uh, jeopardizes public safety. It jams up the criminal justice system. You know, there's there's people running around here that have warrants that yeah. you know they go, hey, ha, 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 you can't take me in jail. You remember Laugh when we were, when the commission authorized us to outsource, meaning we were full here, but we were able to take people to other. Uh, That's what I was just going to ask. Where are you but take? Remember our, our theory on that, or our prediction on that was that if we were able to hold people accountable, we would see the crime rates come down. Now. When we were able to outsource our crime rates, depending on where you look, and I hate to go numbers or somebody will call me on it, right. it dropped about 28 to 30 percent. Our crime started to go down when we were able to incarcerate and hold people accountable. Sure. As soon as the million five got cut and we were limited, that we, they were, we were not allowed, it's not that we didn't want to, but we were told, you're not outsourcing anymore, the crime rate started to climb again. Wow. And so it, is, it was it, it, an easy theory. You know, a pr pretty easy prediction to make, but what a difference it's made. And Kevin's right that the whole thing in our community public safety revolves around can we hold people accountable. Yeah. And it's and it's been uh, very, very important. I want to thank um, uh, Kevin for working very hard on that. I have a paperwork from when I started here that one of the first things I said is we need to get together a jail group and do this. When we were working on that, and then, then the big hit in 2008 came and everything got cut away. Sure. We started working on it again, and then we get a million five in cuts 
back to the sheriff's office and now we're proceeding forward but i want to thank commissioner shooty has been um working with some surrounding people in the region we're, we, we're set for a regional meeting to talk about this to keep the discussion going but now is the time to move forward it yeah. really is all right yeah definitely chief hanson sheriff salisbury good to see you guys get you out of here now start the rest of your day thank, thank you for you the so parade much. too great day that was Thanks. a fun parade it was a great it turnout was how awesome. long until those uh puppies become oh they're so cute uh, on the force oh we uh we do have some co comfort dog oh. coming into the jail too oh yeah, yeah i heard about yeah. that yeah that's awesome we'll talk yeah, about that awesome. you're talking about our shepherds yeah yeah, yeah. Ask deputy berkeley and his family those are raised by deputy berkeley oh, and, so and, cute and whether those will be our replacements or somebody else but weren't they neat yeah i love those